Carbonara is something I've been cooking for years. I've added creme fraiche to it, double cream, mushrooms, none of which are authentic. But I wanted to have a crack at a real deal authentic carbonara today to add to the current selection circulating on the YouTube algorithm. Can I do it? I'll let you be the judge. Watch this video through and then leave a comment below and tell me how I did. Really good carbonara for me depends on a few key things. First up, you need a delicious cured meat. In the northern part of Italy, they'll use guanciale, whereas in the south, they'll use pancetta. This is an integral part of the dish, as when you render the fat down, it coats the pasta and you get a wonderful saltiness and crispy texture. You also need to use pecorino romano or parmesan reggiano. In my opinion, both are great when used together. The pecorino being a sheep's cheese has a crumbly texture and is slightly salty, but a delicious taste. The parmesan made from cow's milk and originating from further north in Italy has a wonderful depth of flavor and is used widely in pasta dishes. Thirdly, a traditional carbonara gets its creaminess from the emulsification of the eggs, fat and water with a little help from the cheese. The key to a creamy carbonara is to prevent the eggs from scrambling and you do that by controlling your heat well. I'm off to a fantastic local deli close to me in the city of Norwich called Amaretto. This is a small authentic delicatessen where all the pastries and pastas are made in the house and they have a great variety of different Italian products including cheeses, cured meats and jarred products. I'm after some guanciale today. This is made from the pork jowl or cheek, cured in salt and spices for around three weeks or until it loses approximately 30% of its original weight. Its flavour is stronger than other pork products such as pancetta and its texture is more delicate. When I'm ready to cook, I'm gonna chop this up into small cubes. As this is a high fat content, you don't want too thick of chunks. That would be my main tip when you're preparing it. Then I crack one egg into a bowl and use the yolk of another egg to help enrich in the mix. You can use either one of these cheeses, but I'm gonna use a mixture of both as I think they work really well together and just complement each other well. Then it's simply a case of mixing all of this up into an eggy cheesy mixture and setting to one side. No need to add salt into this mixture, but I do like to add some black pepper as this is an integral part to a carbonara. I'm gonna start this guanciale off in a cold pan. Doing this allows you to render the fat down really well and making it quite a gradual process, which allows a fantastic crispiness when cooked. I'll be moving this around from time to time and keeping an eye on it as you want it to get evenly coloured. When it starts to pick up a bit of colour, I'll add in one clove of garlic, crushed. I know this would be utter sacrilege for some Italians, but if you love garlic like me, I think it's a shame to miss out and I do think it enhances the flavour of the cured meat. Once I'm content with the cooking of the guanciale, I will start my pasta off in salted boiling water. I'm using a thicker cut spaghetti to help the sauce coat it well. I've seen penne be used as well, but certain pastas will definitely work better with this dish. As there's quite a bit of fat in the pan, I found a good tip is to use some kitchen towel to soak up some of that excess fat. I'm testing my pasta regularly, and once I've got it to the al dente stage, I don't even need to strain it. I can literally lift the pasta into my pan with guanciale and fried garlic. A good point to note here that I turned the heat off my pan a couple of minutes beforehand so the pan wasn't too hot. The pasta will continue cooking in the pan, and it's important to coat the pasta in the rendered down fat. Once this is done, I add my rich, cheesy, eggy mixture and keep moving the pasta around. If you don't do this, you're gonna end up with a scrambled egg. And what you can do as well is use some of the cooking liquor to loosen the mixture up a little bit. Once you've got umptuous, creamy sauce, serve this immediately. I like serving pasta on warm plates as well. It retains the heat better. For presentation purposes, I'm using a carving fork to twirl the pasta, which I think is a really nice touch. And add some parmesan and voila, there you are.
This carbonara dish is a beautiful thing to cook and I think the likes of the guanciale and the parmesan and pecorino, this really adds some authenticity to this dish. And I think with Italian food, less is more. It's not about using 15, 20 ingredients, maybe it's about using three or four, but really good quality ingredients and that's what it's all about. So I think this carbonara is a great inspiration to actually use better quality and to enjoy your food a little bit simpler. Thank you for sticking right until the end. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and thank you ever so much for your support. A lot of work goes into my videos and I do really, really appreciate my viewers and my subscribers and the people that really support my channel. And until next time, fellow foodies, Happy cooking.